this is an original RCA 88D. Uh, it has a MFP moisture, moisture and fungi proofing stamp of uh, July 1944 on its back, so that's telling its age. It's looking, the front panel is looking exceptionally nice and original. The whole radio is uh, almost complete and uh, it can play on its almost original components. This radio uh, was developed in by RCA at the end of the 30s. It uh, came in uh, at that time in two versions. The main one uh, was this one. It had uh, Frequency starts at the bottom of the medium wave at uh, 540 kilocycles, kilohertz, and it went up in six bands to uh, 32 megahertz. This is the, the most common of the old 88s, is the 88D. There are 88s around, uh, but not that many. There is an 88E Echo that's used in uh, the diversity reception. Mm -hmm. And uh, those receivers usually uh, came a couple in a rack mm -hmm. with some extra equipment for diversity reception. Mm -hmm. This is a time when there was only uh, AM and CW yeah. <coughs> available. That's what is built for. You can uh, resolve uh, sideband by uh, adjusting uh, the BFO and uh, uh, playing with the selectivity and uh, the RIF gain. RCA had a couple of radios before. Uh, the, you have an RR60. Uh, I think that radio was uh, yeah mid 30s. You had uh, RR77. Uh, professional and radio amateur use, but, but for its the price is mostly professional use. <coughs> Uh, at the end of the 30s they developed the 88 and that came in quite handy when the uh, war broke out <laughs> they started producing masses and masses for uh, wartime use lots were sent over to Europe and uh, almost anywhere <coughs> they were sent uh, by convoy into uh, Russia uh, in Europe you find them all over the place, uh, uh, Southeast Asia. It's a very good receiver uh, uh, starting yeah, over the whole frequency range. 
And for that time, the, the higher bands had a quite decent reception on this receiver because of the quality of the components. Listening in, yeah. Anything they could use radio for, and that's partly uh, for uh, communications uh, within the army, but it could be uh, anybody who, who needed a radio at that time, and mostly military, because most radio was very uh, restricted. Uh, main thing I think about is uh, civilian uh, shipping. They had radios, they needed radios as well. And uh, yeah, monitoring stations. Uh, there was at that time lots of use below 530 kilocycles, kilohertz. Yeah. And that's why <laughs> there was development, the AR88 low frequency LF, which goes from 75 kilohertz to 550 kilohertz KC here and the KC is for yeah, the kilocycles at that time mm -hmm. and they skipped the medium wave bit and then the rest was 1.5 uh, megacycles to 30 megacycles so you we have two bands ah, we are listening to this one we have two bands uh, below the medium wave and three above so it gets a little bit more crowded uh, on the frequencies than on this one which can spread these two are, are identical on the frequency which can spread uh, the frequency coverage over a larger part of the scale this, uh, these have uh, intermediate frequency of uh, 455 or something like that and the long wave because of its coverage couldn't use that uh, 455 it is about 750 or uh, somewhere there about something special about the bandwidth uh, coverage mm -hmm. on these receivers if you notice it starts with a standard uh, medium wave on the bottom it's 0 0.54 to 1.6 megacycles megahertz uh, then you have a band uh, 1.6 to 4.5, three times the main frequency, uh, a gap of three uh, megacycles. Then you have uh, 4.5 to 12, that's a large jump. That's uh, seven and a half megacycle. Then, and what is strange, you come to the next band, the next range, it's 12 to uh, 16.5 from uh, from seven and a half you go back to uh, four and a half so the frequencies are much closer much more spread so it's, it's much more usable and for a receiver from that era you don't expect that usually each band is double the band before these were con conscious with special choices these choices were made with for a reason one special thing about the quality of these receivers is the capacitors that were used there are hardly any paper capacitors mm -hmm. and those paper capacitors are usually the ones that go leak, leaking, that uh, cause problems. Micro capacitors can cause problems but hardly ever. Usually they are still okay. In these receivers uh, uh, there are no electro electrolytics mm -hmm. 
electrolytics are usually also a cause of problems, but there are just none in there, so no problem. Paper capacitors are the capacitors, uh, the main capacitors, but they are oil-filled paper capacitors. Usually, if they are not leaking oil, they are usually still okay. Uh -huh. Uh, of these three receivers, one only leaked oil. The rest is uh, still uh, original, yeah. and uh, it's not getting hot. The transformers are okay. If it's good, leave it. Uh, at the underside, you have bathtub capacitors. That's a special type. Usually, uh, they combine two or three capacitors in one unit. Uh -huh. uh, that's also the better quality from that area. And uh, they can go wrong, but uh, most are still working, doing their job. It had one main problem. It was uh, the inductor uh, for the power supply, this one. And the underside, uh, I had to open it, uh, cut out a bit of tar mm -hmm. and resolder the end of uh, the inductor wire to its terminal, because in the original version uh, probably the solder was a little bit acid, it had eaten through the wire. So after resoldering this whole radio, that was the only problem need, uh, needed fixing to get it to work. This is the uh, Canadian version, the long, uh, low frequency version. It has its bathtub condensers, if you read, uh, made in Canada. This is an oil-filled paper. This was higher quality than the general ones. And they had more capacitors in one unit. So here there are three connections, three capacitors, three times. What is it, uh, 0.1 or 0.2? Uh, uh, it also has a couple of very special uh, shapes that you hardly ever see anywhere else. There are a few old repairs in here, and this used to be a bathtub that's in that hole there. This is the thing I want to remove. These are the worst European uh, condensers I know. They are from the 60s, uh, probably used by an amateur in the past. We go to this one. Uh, Okay, you can see somebody uh, botched something in. It's a product detector. It actually works, but uh, not really well. So I want to bring it back into original. It, this is the oscillator. These are the two uh, stages, high frequency. Here's to make to, towards the mixer. You see the end of the piston trimmers. This, uh, this is a special version. I only know these uh, from the R88s. These are the coil formers and they were a special material specially uh, used to be able to go up in frequency uh, so uh, it still is up to the modern standard but for that area it, uh, it was an improvement uh, at the higher frequency bands what's special here maybe you can have a look at it you see the original uh, MFP st uh, stamp uh, July 44 and here it's a little hard readable but this is the receiver information and even if it's been butchered a little bit in the past or lost some bits it doesn't really matter it still works nicely listening to AM stations listening to CW also listening to sideband but you have to know the tricks to how to listen to sideband it's still a very nice angle